What's going on guys? Nate here. Um, I actually have a lot to show you today. I've been really busy this weekend. Um, right before exams here I wanted to get some stuff done and I got um, one of my brother's friends ordered like six of the knives, the kitchen knives that I'm finishing up right now which is quite fantastic. Um, so I just thought I would show you how that's going. Um, so I think I showed this chef's knife a while ago um, with the mosaic pin and a cherry handle. Um, so she's getting this one and she wanted she wanted two chef's knives, two santokus, and two paring knives and they're all going to be cherry. Um, I think she's giving them as gifts for Christmas. Um, but I decided to go with this Japanese style handle on all of them. So uh, the, I still got to finish up the blades obviously but I just wanted to show the progress on the handles. Um, this was kind of a frustrating couple days here because I made three of them. Um, here's one of the Santokus um, and the other one. Um, but I made these three handles and then snapped one in, or split one in half completely because I had some sawdust and like mixed with Vaseline stuck in the bottom of the knife like right in there and it was actually causing the knife to sit about right here instead of all the way down um, so that was uh, and stupidly not paying attention I tapped it with the hammer one extra time um, and I wasn't using a rubber mallet like I usually do I was using just like a claw hammer and it uh, just put force on, put too much force on it, and something had to give. So the uh, epoxy popped off both sides. Um, so that really sucked after working on it all day. Um, and then this one had a little like chip out area right here, but uh, filled it in with some epoxy. Um, not the best solution, but it works. Um, so here's another chef's knife. I, I really like the shape of these with this handle on them. I think it really works and it's really comfortable. Um, this one's a little bit thinner than uh, these. I made this this chef's knife uh, quite fatter near the bottom. I, um, I might I think I'm gonna leave one fat and then one thin. Um, and then I have this Santoku, which uh, it's got a quite large handle for the size of the blade. Um, could shorten it. Probably not gonna, but I'm definitely gonna thin it out because it's just like way too thick right now. Um, but my KMG makes doing these faceted handles really easy. The nice having a flat platen that's actually flat is really fantastic. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a look at these. Um, these are probably what my kitchen knives are gonna look like, except uh, I'm gonna do a satin finish on all these blades. Um, but I've polished brass pins, and these are all just. Uh, um, friction fit together. Um, so if I get a something that won't mar the surface, hopefully, let me just tap this out real quick. I'm just being super careful when I uh, when I remove these and everything. So you just need like a piece of something soft. And you can tap the pin out, and then the blade comes loose, and you have your handle, which makes these really easy to finish uh, this way. Um, how I do this is I coat the tang in Vaseline when I epoxy it all together, and then uh, it gives you a nice, perfect fit. Um, really, really tight. Uh, sometimes I have to use this, which is my favorite piece of wood in the shop, to get the handles off. Um, you just put it like you chuck up the or put the blade in a vise, pop this bad boy on there, a couple taps, and the handle's loose. It's a really, really amazing, amazingly useful piece of wood right there. But um, as you can see, it's a really tight fit. I gotta tap the pin back in. Um, so there's that, the progress on that. Um, I have another um, Santoku here that's gonna be full tang. Um, still going to be cherry wood, but she's not getting that one. Um, and then I'll show you. Uh, I had to do a, a handle job, a rehandle for a customer. Uh, I showed you the tang before. It was 
really madly rusted and pitted and, and horrible. Um, put together with the, just these uh, brass cutlery rivets, which are, are pretty nice if you're just doing, I don't know, mass production cheap cheapness. Uh, this isn't one of my knives. This is a, a Messermeister, I, the edge guard says. But um, So I put like a convex edge on it. Um, that's what the guy wanted. And some black G10 to, um, you know, he wanted it to look the same as it used to, um, but he wanted stainless pins. So I threw some stainless pins in there. Um, and I was amazed at how easy it was to get the get this to line up there. I just set the angle on the platen on my KMG and did that. It took me like 10 minutes, which was fantastic. Um, I'm really loving that thing so much. A um, little, couple little finish issues I got to clean up still, but I think the handle itself looks really nice. It's nice and hand filling. Uh, balances the knife really well. So... I think he's going to be really happy. He said this knife has uh, sentimental value for him, so he wanted it. He wanted it to look nice, um, and I think I think I did a pretty good job. This is actually the first rehandle I've ever done, um, so to do that. Although stupid Jant supply had taken like five days to ship me two pieces of G10, which was kind of frustrating. Um, and then I have just a little utility knife for my cousin that I finished up. This one's got uh, bird's eye maple. I think I might have showed this before, but I'm not sure. Bird's eye maple with a mosaic pin and uh, a stainless pin in the front. Um, it's like a scan or a, a saber grind with a blended edge that's up to 800 grit, I believe, um, and it's quite sharp. Um, some magazine paper here. Um, again, sharpening on the KMG even is really awesome. I like. I, I'm surprised that I like the wider belt. I was thinking that I was gonna not like it, but um, turns out it works really amazingly well. So that uh, I'm happy with how this one turned out. Not like ultra finished because um, he's gonna just use it, and he said n not to worry about making everything perfect. So you see, there's grind lines in the spine and and stuff like that, but he just wanted a little utility knife to carry around with him every day. I don't have a sheath for it yet. Um, I might use this little this little bit of a sheath and fashion something from that because um, it fits, I mean it's perfect perfect size for this knife. Um, I would like the sheath to go up a little bit, but we'll see. I might put some kydex around it or something as I want to do. Those uh, Kydex and leather hybrid sheaths, so that's going to be awesome. Um, and then I have another kitchen knife. This one is for a family friend. Um, she wanted like a smaller Santoku, um, and I did my style of handle, my handle shape on this one that I like to do. Um, as you can see, it's, I mean, a lot of my knives have that sort of handle shape, um, except the kitchen knives, obviously, but. Uh, got red G10 with red and black over it that you're probably, I mean, it's hard to even see in person. Um, I gotta get some red and black that's not so subtle, but I think it looks really nice. Um, whole thing is sandblasted except the edge. Uh, handles all sandblasted and the blade. I like, I like the, the look of this, like, pitted, kind of gnarly looking blade with the nice polished edge. And this guy got monstrously sharp. Uh, just really, probably the sharpest knife I've ever made, actually. Uh, I mean, crazy. It's a flat grind with a blended convex edge up to 800 grit with, uh, and then buffed with no micro bevel or anything. So, turned out real good. This is uh, CPM 154 CM. I forgot to mention that all these all these kitchen knives are CPM 154 CM, um, which I'm really really happy with um, how how it's uh, performing so far. It takes a really wicked edge at 800 grit with a um, some buffing on there. It takes a really wicked edge, and uh, this little utility knife is just regular 154 CM. Um, 
so I'm interested to see how uh, how differently they perform. This one seems a little bit um, of a rougher edge than yeah you can kind of tell from the sound a bit um, this edge feels slightly smoother but maybe maybe it's because of the more even distribution of carbides maybe it's because I did a slightly better job of polishing it um, all possibilities but um, yeah so that's really all I have to show you guys today um, really loving my grinder so much um, and then I actually have something else coming in the mail that's going to be even more exciting um, which I will show you guys when I get it um, it's kind of having to do with that class I took uh, not too long ago with John Grimsmo um, where I made this which I actually don't think I've shown on my channel yet my tour fixed blade that I made at the uh, CNC knife making class that John Grimsmo ran a couple months ago or last month I think um, no yeah a couple months ago um, that was a, an absolutely amazing time and uh, this knife is freaking sweet I was gonna wait till I made a sheath for it to show but whatever um, it was really fun to mill this guy uh, you can see that engraving there is absolutely stunning and uh, the left the uh, fire scale on and uh, we did the bolt stirred that's what we uh, so how we were machining the G10 handles with a, with a ball mill going over the top um, and I had the idea uh, so he had a, a, a code that was a cross hatched pattern that left this kind of stippled texture up there and then we also he also um, could run just half of it to get the these lines and but I wanted uh, just the top part to be the stippling so we called it a the boltster for no reason little inside joke but uh, gotta make a sheath for this I think I'm gonna put whoop, throwing shit everywhere um, I'm going to put camo uh, kydex with it it's gonna look freaking awesome uh, thing is an amazing knife um, if you guys have a chance to get one when they come out, you should definitely do that. Um, they're going to be really sweet. And now I'm going to try to cut paper on camera and fuck it up. There we go. Seems there's a little... Yeah, there's a couple little tiny chips down there. I've been using it. That's what it's meant for. Oh well. Yeah pretty sharp. Uh, the first time I had a chance using an Edge Pro was sharpening this. I, um, I like it, but it, I don't know. I kind of liked it, but I kind of didn't. I like sharpening freehand on a belt just because it's faster, um, and I tend to like convex edges. I just think they hold up a bit better, but um, I don't know. On a, on a really high-end expensive knife, I feel like uh, doing it on an Edge Pro is a better way to go about it. Um, I mean, I do like that you can finish it up to a really high grit really really easily, but I don't know. So that's really all. I'll stop rambling and wasting you guys' time. Um, I'll have more to show next weekend. Uh, but if you guys are interested in kitchen, another, I'm planning on doing another run of kitchen knives. If you guys are interested, let me know. Um, but uh, I mean, it won't be anytime real soon. But if you want, if you want one, express your interest now, and I can plan for that so I don't run short of knives again, which is kind of what happened. But I actually, do have this one is going to be available, um, guy. If you're watching, uh, message me about that. But either way, I'm going to have. Um, well, I guess I won't stop rambling now. I have uh, a few knives left that aren't finished. If you are interested in one. I got these two little Bowie um, utility blades. I got this this Hunter. Um, can have whatever sorts of handle you want. Um, and then I have um, let's see where we at. This uh, thinner hundred thousandths one fifty four cm. 
And then I got this big, nasty Persian fighter thingy that's going to be absolutely amazing and is going to have Guy Carta on it, which will be really sweet. So, alright, I'm actually done now. Peace, guys. Thanks for watching.